Welcome back everyone to CNJ Jamaica. Enjoy today's video and remember to like, comment, subscribe and share with all your friends and family. It's CNJ Jamaica all about St. Thomas. It is my privilege today to talk to a woman of the soil, a woman that has, I have known since I was going to the University of Technology, it was called CAST at the time. She was just in my class, not really my class, but one that was linked to it, and just knew her in passing, and has, as God do, did it, we worked at the same place for over five years, and it's my alma mater, Kingston Technical, and surprisingly, I went to her alma mater, Mark Bay High School, years later. So we're here today to talk to no, none other than Marsha Guinness. Marsha, tell me a little about Marsha. Tell me a little about Marsha. Okay, um, thanks for the privilege for, for interviewing me. I'm indeed um, honored to be one of the interviewees on your YouTube channel. Um, well, there's a lot to say about Marsha, but I just tell you who she is in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So I am a veteran educator for over 26 years. Okay. I'm an author of um, quite a number of publications, even on um, um, list. Okay. I am an entrepreneur, a school inspector with the NEI, a training specialist, and I'm pretty much um, so many other things. Okay. I serve as PTA president. Um, for two schools my children have attended, I'm currently the PTA president for Licensed Primary School, um, heading into my third year, um, mother of three children, and I must say, um, those children have really propelled uh, me, they, you know, they caused the ideas to come, they caused me to just keep on going, and I must say, they have added so much value to my life over the years. So that's Marsha in a nutshell. Okay, wow. That, that is a lot. Marsha, you have not wasted yes, years. Quite, you have been on the earth. You have not wasted your years at all. Because I have seen over the years that you have all, you have been a true entrepreneur in that I always hear of different business ventures that you have started over the years. So could you share with us some of the business ideas that you have had over the years and especially those that uh, you have done in St. Thomas? All right, so in 2006, I was bursting with innovation. I, I just wanted to go out there and do something different. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give back to St. Thomas because having worked in Kingston for such a long time, yes. and I, you know, my, my parish is really forgotten. We, we, we go to college and we, we do very well and we leave. We go into Kingston and other parishes. True. And I said, you know, it's full time. I give back. I've, I've gained so much mm -hmm. um, from, you know, growing up in St. Thomas and it was time for me to give back. So in 2006, I started the first um, multi-service educational institution in St. Thomas, the St. Thomas Institute of Business and Entrepreneurship, yes. which I managed remotely because at the time I was um, still employed full time at Kingston Technical. I managed that business remotely while working full-time in Kingston. Um, what was so special about Stibe, we call it then, is it was a five-tier um, business. So it was five businesses being operated on the St. Thomas Institute of Business and Entrepreneurship. So our core business was um, post-high school education. Mm -hmm. We had an internet cafe, a stationary center, a docu center. But what was re very exciting about Stibe is that we had our own TV program, What's Your Story? that we use as a marketing tool for the business, but it was, it was our little profile, our version of profile okay. um, in St. Thomas, where I got people from the parish who were successful. They were interviewed on the program, and then um, we ran ads for, uh, for businesses um, okay. within the interview. So it was really, it, it was really an exciting concept, um, you know, for, for reasons not um, from poor management, but for reasons um, we didn't stay up for more than four years. It's a concept I would revisit, you know, having... Oh, so you were able you know, to go through that first year that business is normally failing and you were able to last for four years? Yes. Okay. 
for four years. Well, I made a decision to close it because I had another child at the time and to be managing a business, a full-time job and yes. a new baby, I had yes. to make a decision. Okay. And I couldn't give up my, my, my child. I mean, so you decided on family, up. family, okay. Yes, family was important and yes. then some kind of financial stability at the time, I had to make a decision. Sadly, I had to close it down, but Claudia, I will revisit that concept sometime in the future, whether okay. in St. Thomas or somewhere else. Okay. I revisit that concept. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so besides the, the I, I polytechnic, also, I know that you have had many other ventures in the parish. Yes, um, well, I've done some training um, as a training specialist through the Social Development Commission. Mm -hmm. I have done some training in three communities, um, three of the STC communities in entrepreneurship, customer service, and project oh. management. Okay. Um, three of those um, communities are White Horses, mm -hmm. Port Morant, and Pontil communities. I, you know, went out and impacted and That was also another way of giving back and sharing knowledge with persons from, you know, those rural communities that needed help. Yes. It was really a pleasure working with the Social Development Commission. So let me ask you, what inspires you, Marsha? What inspires you to continue to give of yourself so much? All right. Um, I think I'm very unique. I think I'm a very unique um, first, first persona. Mm -hmm. um, what drives me may not drive you. Problems drive me. People get all stressed out by problems and, all, and they freak out. But yes. um, problems or challenges are my playing ground. Um, I thrive on solving problems. Well, solving problems have, have become a hobby for me now. Um, because over the years, I have been navigating my life's challenges and business challenges and work challenges. So, but what really inspires me is to see the results or the outcome of those persons that have impacted or influenced. Oh, like okay. yesterday, I was talking, I was talking to one of my, my, my students at the St. Thomas Institute of Business and Entrepreneurship. I remember meeting him when he came there to to do some, you know, some studies on the side mm -hmm. and um, developed a relationship with, with him, young, young star at the time. And, um, you know, he, he said to me yesterday, boy, Marsha, I watch how you're doing this and you're doing that. And he said, Marsha, I remember you say your mantra is never say die. And trust me, you have to kill me to kill me, like literally kill me. Because trust me, Claudia, if you're not me down, I'm coming back up and I'm coming back up strong, real strong. Yes. Um, but it's really you know, that kind of interaction yes. um, with persons of all different walks of life and, and to see how your influence, you know, has turned their lives around. It, it, it's really heartwarming, you know, to see what some of those persons have, be, you know, have become. Oh, yes. yeah. So Claudia, it goes, so, 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 so all of that that is inside me, it goes out to people, but then their energy comes right back to me. Yes. And yes. it becomes a cycle. So I give some more people, they, the energy comes back, and I yes. give another set, so it just keeps spinning. It just, ne it just yes. never ends. One feeds the other. But with what is happening with COVID right now, how has it affected your different businesses? Or has it affected it in all any right. positive um, or negative ways? All right. So COVID has its positives and it has its negatives. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do is look at the positives in a bad situation. Or, you know, see the good and bad? Yes, yes. Um, in terms of how it has impacted me negatively is that a lot of clients become financially challenged so okay. persons who would want to um, be able to access your services you know are having economic challenges some lose their jobs they have to be spending more to maintain their family and so on yeah uh, and some have lost their jobs too but um that's a negative but claudia it may sound strange to the average man but covid has been such a huge blessing for me in many ways, you know, more bonding time with my family. I've, yes, you know, I've never yes. spent so much quality time. My daughter just did my hair and my makeup uh, and my daughter is 11. And I never knew my daughter had so much talent. Yes. I have seen her talent. Yes. Being, being home with her, I mean, my daughter is amazing. Say, Mommy, let me do your makeup. Let me do your hair. Well, you know, you know, COVID you has brought out... buy that time. That time can't be bought. No, and COVID has brought out the best part of March, I get a chance to rest and relax. I get more time to network with people, reach out to people, and so. Um, the positives, too, is that I am coming up with, with, with innovative ideas, different business ideas. Okay. Um, I start 
launch my online school. Well, it has not taken off yet, but I'm hopeful that when the results are out, you know, people will come running like, you mean, what do you have to offer? Okay. Um, recently um, launched an empower a series of empowerment ser seminars for parents, teachers, and school management teams in, in preparing for the online community because this is new to us. Yes. And I know yes. people are already panicking and freaking out and how we're going to help the children and so on. So I have sought to, to put together a series of seminars to help, um, you know, parents, teachers, and school management team to deal with the new normal in the education system. Okay. It's always seeing a need, Claudia. It's always yes. it's just, just um, looking at what is happening, observing the environment, observing what is happening around you, and, yes. you know, coining something, kind of customizing something yes. to meet some specific needs of persons. And that's what COVID um, is doing now, is kind of helping people to go into their brain boxes and say, what is it people need? They're they locked outside in, the box. they're challenged. What, yes, what is it that they need? How can you meet that yes. particular need? And so what are you most proud of? Uh, in business, I'm talking now, what are you most proud of? And what gives you the most joy in business? All right, I'm most proud of is is being able to conceptualize an idea and pull out all the stops to make it a reality. Because, you know, a lot of times people have great ideas, but it never leaves their head. It's yes. all about, oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that. And, and what they do, they find all sorts of excuses, Claudia, for not being able to realize their dream. Oh, I'm not have no money. People are not going to buy it or whatever. That means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. So you don't um, listen to the naysayers. No, no, no. Well, 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 I really don't care about what anybody wants to say because you see, when Marsha sits down and runs the ideas in her head and work it out, work it out, calculate it. Yes. Then the moment I say I'm going in this full force, I'm taking the risk because without risk, there is no reward. My greatest pleasure is when I see the fruits of, of my labor. The fruits of my labor. This is a homework organizer. I struggle with students and homework. They just never get it right. Okay. And I said, I'm tired of talking. So this is one. Oh, in, 2015, yes. in 2015, yes. CXC said, entrepreneur Cape. I said, wow, at least I had started the journey. Um, persons are struggling with time management issues. They get all stressed out. They can't manage their time. They can't manage. This is an organizer for adults. Okay. So help them to manage their time and reduce the stress. So that's another product. But then I've always wanted to write for an international um, publisher. My second book, I co-authored a Macmillan publisher. I said, wow, I mean, it's amazing what I've accomplished. And that's just being that, the author part of it. But it's really amazing to see. I have a, a, a virtual business called Professional Training Services where I offer an e-communication service to schools. I have a few schools on my, my client list. Yes. I'm trying to grow the client base, but I have, you know, you know those things take off the grown-up principal with said, you that's something we have always wanted. So from and, conceptualization and to see the fruits of your labor, it gives you great satisfaction. Yes. Wow. Marsha did it. With, <laughs> with, a, lot, with a lot of stroke. Marsha did it with a lot of struggles and disappointments. And I must tell you with very little emotional support because I, everybody looks for support from me. Everybody believes that I'm a, I'm a rock that Strong. everybody must lean on. And they never ever think sometimes I want somebody to lean on. So I get very little emotional support because everybody's always looking to me. Mm -hmm. And they never ever look to say, let me hold you up. I understand. I'm sure your children are, are a real strength for you. But let me go on to the next question yeah, because are. that leads into it. You're not getting a lot of the, the emotional support that you would want. So what are some of the challenges that you have encountered over the years as a female in business? All right. Um, females are sometimes taken for granted because we're very emotional. Yes. Um, I had a school bus service. Uh, that I launched in 2017, and as I think the only woman in the industry, um, <laughs> you know, I staying for granted, try to really make it premium and like, you know, cut above the rest, but it's hard for people to sometimes accept a woman in certain kinds of industries. 
my challenge as a woman, as, a, as an entrepreneur, is sometimes I'm taken for granted. Okay. And, you know, people appeal to your emotions and, you know, things are hard and things that they wouldn't do with men business owners. They do with you because that part of your heart that, you know, is always saying, oh my, you know, it's really hard, Claudia. Yeah. They have taken advantage. Yeah, okay. They have, okay. They have really taken advantage. Okay. So you are operating One within the St. Thomas environment? You were to operate in yes. within the St. The bus service was within St. Thomas? Yes, from Prospect to Kingston. And, okay. I, and when I said premium, yes. when I said premium, Claudia, I did what none of the other operators did. I served bottled water. Ooh. Every child who, who um, registered for the service, they got one of these complimentary. Okay. And they got some, but they got something they couldn't pay for, which was um, a, a, mother, a mother on board. Ah. Uh. Uh, a mother yes. on board. I mean, you know, a parent, a parent will call and say, oh, I'm not sure my daughter is coming down, but she's not feeling so well. You can stop at the gas station. I say, well, we can't get in the gas station stop this morning. I think she wants some ginger tea. She won't get ginger there. I have some styrofoam cups. Do you want me to make her some ginger tea? And when she got to my place to board the bus, Claudia, there was a hot cup Hot beverage, of yes, waiting. Tea. Um, well, unfortunately... Our bus crashed one morning. We were coming in. Wow. And, and, our, bus, and our bus was written off and the service was dismantled. And that um, happened how many years ago? The, um, the accident was last year, April 5, on the Michael Manley Boulevard. Okay. Okay. But the I see that has not stopped you. Nobody. That hasn't stopped you at all. I, 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 I took all the money I had in my, in, my, in my account and all over that I've invested. Um, about a million dollars and my boss is back up. I mean, oh. you can't stop me. Oh. You are not to be stopped. No, no, no. You, no, no. Claudia, I said, I live, breathe, and sleep. Never say die. You gotta kill me physically, like, see me buried mm -hmm. to kill me. Mm -hmm. Never say die. I always say to I'm my on-top students about the 7-Up story. Wherein you're trying it, fail, yes. you're trying it, failing, you're trying to fail, continue to try. You're not going to be foolish with your yeah, attempts. You're you going to investigate, but you're going, you're not going to stop trying. Calculated yeah, but, but risks. Claudia, all, all the entrepreneurs who have succeeded have gone through a whole lot of struggles and and don't all right. All right, let me just quickly share this with you. I had the opportunity of meeting the owner of Digicel, yes. uh, Dennis O'Brien, who's from Ireland. And when mm -hmm. that man told us his story. He's like, he's like that not, that's not true. He failed at all his businesses in Ireland. Failed at everything. He said he failed to the point where his wife was tired of seeing him just lying around the house doing nothing because he gave up. And, and look at Digicel. He came to Jamaica and launched Digicel. Powerhouse. Yes. Never give up. Quitters yes. never win. Winners never quit. Full stop. I love that. I love that. And uh, with all of that, um, I need to get to my next question. What do you have any ad advice or lessons learned that you would like to share with others? All right. Um, yes, I do. Um, I, I was having classes with my entrepreneurship students the other day because what I know do is because we're having classes online mm -hmm. since August is um, send two videos before every class, an intro video, a closing video. They have to give a one minute summary, a lesson like 10 tips to success. I remember we looked at a video and it said, I win or I learn. I never lose. Okay. All my challenges is, is just a, it's just a lesson. It's not loss because yes. you have learned something from it. Yes. Um, advice is, um, reach out to people, be good to people, you know, give up yourself to people. And um, that's my advice. Serve the best way you can give all you can share all you can help all you can. Um, my advice. I yes, win or I learn. I never lose. Win, I love that. Never lose. Because when you don't win, as Stop long as you something. learn, mm -hmm. you would not have lost. Yes, yes, now, yes. Uh, I win. Um, my lesson. Yes. yes. Winning. And, 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 you know, just put yourself in the frame of mind. Talk to people. Um, build that network because you just never know where that network is. Really? We're, we're on vacation now. We're on vacation now in Kingston. This is my second time. 
at this particular location. And it has been a blessing. It was my daughter's birthday. I would just use the opportunity to just have a vacation, have a little thing for her because we can't eat out because of COVID. That's also the creative thinking. And you know, the guy and I, we are building a relationship and so on. That's how you just never know. Yes. Um, he said his wife, his wife said she wants to register for the seminar. So see here, that's a client I got by just a business relationship. Wonderful. Always be networking and and don't have a oh, never no, lose see. mentality i love that so we're going to lead yes. uh, as i told never you before lose. this channel is all about saint thomas the people in saint thomas the places in saint thomas so what do you love about the business environment in saint thomas and if there's anything that you think could change for for better in within the business environment in saint thomas all right in a nutshell um saint thomas is very rich in resources um Marsha Guinness is one of those resources <laughs> and testimony. And we have lots more of persons who we can testify are rich human resources. Um, rich in other resources because our, our sand and gravel leave the parish and go and build the other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of, you know, nice spots that are not being properly marketed mm -hmm. because I don't think the people in St. Thomas have really learned to appreciate what they have as a parish. Um, there's a lot of development, a whole lot of development um, to take place there, but it will take the change in the mindset of the people. We first have to change our mindset before we can see what we have in St. Thomas as a parish yes. and start moving it so it becomes one of those top parishes rather than a forgotten parish. But um, Claudia, one of the reasons I haven't left because I could have moved out of St. Thomas and come into Kingston. It would have been so much more convenient for me in so yes. many ways. Yes. But I think some of us as rich resources need to remain there to build the parish in, in, you know, in, in, in so many ways. And, and one of the things I plan to do um, to see how I can impact or influence on um, the persons there to see what they have, invest in it and grow it. I'm actually aspiring to enter representational politics as the political landscape is changing in St. Thomas. Wow, okay, okay. I won't ask you any more about that because I know when you're ready to disclose, it will be disclosed in a fantastic way. Yes, yes. Eastern yes. St. Thomas, definitely, because we definitely need to move Eastern St. Thomas to a higher place on the map. Very good, very good. So thank you, Marsha. It was lovely talking to you. Very lovely talking to yeah, you. You're most welcome, Claudia. Yes, yes, because as, as I tell people all the time, I'm not from St. Thomas. I was born and raised in Kingston. I moved here as at 16 years old, but I have adopted the parish as if it, I was born here. So I'm working here now. And when you, when you spoke about the, uh, qualified persons leaving the parish and not when they go to university and never coming back. I'm always talking to the students of Mark Bay they High never School. Come back. They never come back. When I, when, I went to, when I started to work at Mark Bay High School and I saw the quality of the students and the staff there, I said, whoa, nobody knows about this little treasure in this parish. And when I saw how these students would perform and then they would go to Kingston and then we'll never see them again. I said, no, this has to change. And with persons like yourself and for others who are now returning to the parish and helping to build the parish, I know that St. Thomas can only move from strength to strength. One person at a time. But, but one, thing, one thing before I go, um, you know, as, as you said, the parish has very rich resources, but I'm even looking at, at myself as a past student of Mark Bay High School. Mark Bay High School has not trapped me. I mean, in terms of, in terms of my progress, I've made so, you know, I've accomplished so much. And I, and I think as my alma mater, um, you need to find people like me to come back to showcase, you know, what, the, what we can become. Um, mm -hmm. Though we are from that little place there in the back of Jamaica. Yes. Showcase people like me to say, see, there she went to Marbury High School, she comes yes. from the beginnings. But yes. because she can be author, she can be training specialist, she can be inspector, she can be entrepreneur, she can be, and she can be so many things. That is to say to you that if Marsha can do it, you all can do it too. You either win or learn, you never lose. So we'll leave you with that. Let us, never lose. That. Let us be our mantra for the week. You either win or learn, you never lose. Thank you, Marsha, and have you a wonderful lose. day.
you're so you're so thanks so much claudia for having me again